I suppose first and foremost, the only real nailed on expectation is you must enjoy learning history. Obviously, any GCSE choice, the first and foremost should be, is it a subject you're interested in? Is it a subject you enjoy? And if the answer is yes to that, then it should be given proper consideration. History is a subject with a high work ethic, both inside school and out of school. It's very much a literacy based subject. So there's lots of reading and writing involved again in class and at home. So good, reasonable literacy skills are expected. Uh, good time management with workload is also needed and possible desire to study history beyond GCSE, take things to A level and maybe beyond that. So those should all be taken into consideration when making your choices anyway. So if we move on and look at my first slide. So that's the history team, as you're well aware. Now, obviously, when you're picking a subject, you should not pick the subject based on I'm going to get that member of staff who's been teaching me for the last couple of years. You could have any of those members of staff teaching you GCSE history. So it's worth just bearing things in mind that if you take the subject, you could be having any one of those members of staff. So uh, pick the subject, not the teacher is what I'm trying to say. Uh, that's the overview of the course. So the course is delivered by an examination board called EDUCAS, which is a Welsh based board for England and Wales. You can see here that's the uh, board's website. So on there, and that's available to any member of the public, student, staff, you can go on there, it gives you an overview of the course, it gives you access to past exam papers, to mark schemes, and a general overview of the uh, course. So that's a useful website to visit when you're making your decisions. You also, from that website, be able to download the specification, which gives you an in-depth overview of the course. There's also a link to that just there, as you can see. So that's a useful document to have, to have a look through when you're making your decisions for the various subjects you want to choose. And every subject at GCSE, if you go on the exam websites, they'll have those specifications for you to be able to download and look at. So they're useful to have as well when you're making your de uh, decisions. So on to the actual history course, it is 100% examination based. There is zero coursework. Now, all those exams come at the end of the two years of study. So everything you've been learning at the end of year nine, when we start the course all the way through year 10 into year 11, you've got to remember and recall all that body of knowledge and work in the final month or so of your studying at year 11. So there's a, everything goes into those exams at the end of year 11. Obviously, we make sure you're fully prepared for those and we do a lot of groundwork, getting used to the examination questions and papers beforehand. So there's no surprises, you know exactly what you're gonna be doing come those exams at the end of the two years. As you can see, the exams are split into two components. Component one, which is a two hour exam, which is split into two separate papers, each one hour in length. So you're doing back to back, that's two hours. Then a couple of days later, you do what we call component two, which is another two exams, this time split into an hour 15 minutes and a 45 minute exam. Again, you do those back to back. So in essence, it's another two hour exam. And that's it. That will determine your GCSE. Again, to reiterate, no coursework. So what you've got there is then a breakdown of each component and what you would be studying. So component one, you can see is split into two subjects. You've got a non-British study and you've got a British study. Now, we, as your history teachers, choose those topic areas. So from the non-British study, which is what we start with, we have decided to look at the United States, a nation of contrast from 1910 to 1929. Then we move on and look at the second half of component one, which is the British study. And again, we've chosen for you to be taught Elizabethan England from 1558 to 1603. I'll give you details of what these different topics include in a little bit in this in a little bit of time during this presentation. That's your first paper. As I said, two little exams, hour each, you're doing them back to back for component one. Then component two. 
you do a development of the United Kingdom from 1919 to 1990. So that's a very broad study. And then we do what's called a thematic study. And again, we've chosen changes in health and medicine in Britain from the 5th century to the present day. And that also has a focus on uh, developments in patient care in the Crimean War, uh, Crimean War in the hospital in Scutari. And that was developments in nursing and hospital care as pioneered by Florence Nightingale. So we have a specific focus to do on that. There's a breakdown of the examinations. So you can see basically that component one is where 50% of the GCSE and obviously component two is where the other 50% of the GCSE comes in. Component one between the two papers is worth 100 marks with six for spelling, punctuation and grammar, additionally. And then similar for component two, you've got a 45 minute exam on the Britain focus, 1919 to 1990. And then you've got an hour 15 minute exam on the medicine content. Again, between them, they're worth 100 marks and this time four additional marks for spelling, punctuation and grammar. Skill wise, those different exams test a variety of different skills that you need as an historian. So it'll be testing your ability for using the knowledge that you've been taught, the content over the last two years. So your comprehension of large bodies of knowledge, your ability to memorize information, to recall it and apply it, an analysis of cause and consequence, an analysis of change across and continuity across a large period of time. Written skills, you'd be asked to analyse change in continuity, essay writing to uh, produce a sustained and complex piece of work using thematic paragraphs, evaluation of significance of events and individuals, sources, you'd be asked to describe source content, analysis of source content to assess its meaning and make inferences from that. Uh, use of knowledge against source content to determine how accurate the information in a source is, an evaluation of the source's authorship and its origins to determine reliability. You'll also be looking at interpretations and making evaluations and how interpretations were formed, the strengths and limitations of them, and being able to challenge an interpretation. And of course, make judgments and conclusions. So there's a variety of different skills that those exams are going to be testing. So to give you a breakdown of what it is you'll be taught, you can see there that's the Elizabethan component from option uh, component one. You can see we'll be looking at a variety of political, social and economic aspects of Elizabethan society. So we'll be looking at Elizabethan government. That's the political aspects of both local and national government. So privy councils, role of parliament at the local level, the role of justices of the peace, uh, parish constables. We'll be looking at lifestyles and contrasts between rich and poor in Elizabethan society, maybe in-depth study of the Elizabethan poor and the Elizabethan poor laws of 1601. Uh, popular entertainment, so things like Elizabethan theatre and development of it, uh, looking at blood sports, football and other things that Elizabethan people did at the time to keep themselves occupied. The problems of religion is a big issue in Elizabethan society. So you'll be looking at how Elizabeth introduced her religious settlement and the issues that created for her with Catholics and extreme Protestants known as Puritans and the threats that came to Elizabeth because of those decisions, as well as looking at the foreign uh, threats from the Spanish and the Spanish Armada. You also, for component one, as I previously said, be looking at American history from 1910 uh, 19, to 29. So we'll be looking at issues of immigration policy in America, how America started to become more isolated during this time. Uh, issues over religion and race issues. So we'll be looking at things like the rise of the Ku Klux Klan, prejudice and persecution, uh, persecution of black Americans and Native Americans. You'll be looking at issues of crime and corruption so we'll be looking at prohibition the banning of alcohol in america and the, all the problems that created with increased criminality and the rise of gangsters like al capone and the empire he created you'll be looking also at economics the boom and bust of america at this time being one of the most prosperous societies in history to being 
caught up in the economic crash of the 19, late 1920s with the Wall Street crash and the economic depression which followed, as well as looking at popular entertainment, so the rise of cinema and silent cinema, and then also the introduction of the talkies, as well as other forms of popular entertainment, and also a bit of societal or social history, looking at the role and development of women and looking at how women's lives developed with the uh, introduction of what became known as the flappers. Then the second half of the course, traditionally we pick this up at the back end of year 10 into year 11. We're looking at the development of the United Kingdom. We'll be looking again at the 1920s to begin with, looking at things like the development of women again. So a little crossover with the flappers looking at how life developed in the 30s with the economic depression that followed, which started in America, then made its way across to Britain. So look at how the government looked to uh, try and alleviate the issues of the depression, looking at the build up to the war and how the people of Britain dealt with the war on the home front, as well as the repercussions of the war after, uh, well, life after uh, the war in Britain. Then moving on to the 60s and 70s, 60s, looking at all the good times, music, popular teen culture that starts to develop. And then looking at the 70s with the winter of discontent, three day working week and all the problems that the 70s brought, uh, brought. as well as finally looking at the 80s, the Thatcher years, looking at the Falklands War, the economic policies of Thatcherism, privatisation and uh, everything else. And then finally, we look at the medicine unit, which moves on to looking at basically causes, attempts to treat and cure illnesses, attempts to prevent illness, advances in medical knowledge, developments in patient care and developments in public health and welfare by the state throughout a whole thematic approach of roughly 1,500 years. So looking at how things changed and developed and de stayed the same throughout the course of that period for all those different themes, as well as looking at that issue of uh, Florence Nightingale in the Crimean War, which is the only actual piece of knowledge which we can guarantee will be on the exam paper. So we really make sure that students are thoroughly aware of that content because that's 20 marks that we can guarantee we know those questions will be there. Everything else, we have to wait and see what the exam brings. A uh, few final couple of ways, because I'm just note we're nearly out of time. A couple of trips that we run. Uh, we will hopefully still be running the Battlefield Tour at some point. So that allows us to take students, which you know you don't necessarily have to be studying history, but and it's not certainly not compulsory, but we do encourage you maybe to uh, have a look at the impact of the First World War by looking at the battlefields of Belgium and France. We also run a couple of theatre trips to Newark where we take students in March and de uh, December and March in the final year of study as part of their revision preparation to a performance of Elizabethan England and medicine through time, which basically allows students to uh, look at exam workshops and look at live performances as some of the key content that they've been studying over that year. And finally, that gives you a little idea of the different career paths that studying history can provide you with. Again, similar to geography, it gives you a whole host of different career paths from marketing to journalism to law, media, publishing, uh, publishing politics, a wide variety of different careers can be accessed with a study of history. So that concludes this presentation. If you've got any questions, please feel free to uh, add them now or you can always email me later on with any questions if you think of them later. Thank you for listening, folks. Any questions?